today, we start on the seven gates of Aleph that complete Gebura. Now I'm to try to make these videos a reasonable uh, length of time and not too long, I'm going to start with the first three gates of Aleph. A linear gate, the path of Aleph, a triangular gate, and a quadrangular gate. Now, I've got to cram a lot of information into this video, so bear with me. It's going to take some introduction before I get to working the first uh, linear gate. So, <clears throat> the triangle of Tiferet, Gejula, Gebura, this triangle is the triangle of the solitary self, which I'd also call the mental body, the temporal mental body. Now, it's what's commonly referred to as the mental body. Then there's the astral body and the physical body. These are really inexact terms that we need to shy away from, or I shy away from. There is awareness. The whole thing is awareness. The I is awareness. Everything within the body of the I is awareness. It is a mental body. Okay? So everything is a, a mental body. <clears throat> the I itself, which is to say Kether, Hakma, and Bina, this is the pernal realm, the eternal realm. Okay? Everything from Tiferet down is the temporal realm. After it passes through that Akashic layer from the non-sequential, the undifferentiated eternal realm into the differentiated realm, which is the temporal realm. <clears throat> the realm in which time exists, okay? At the level of Tiferet, Gedula, and Gebura, this is the initial uh, <clears throat> particularization of the eye awareness, where the, the awareness explodes into an infinite number of reflections of the eye. These are the solitary selves. This is the temporal mental body. And it encompasses, really, everything else in the tree. The rest of the tree exists within this temporal mental body. It is a temporal mental body, a differentiated mental body. Then we have the triangle of Yesod, Netzach, and Hod down below. And between those, between Netzach and Hod, is a mother letter of water, Mem. Okay? This is what we call the astral realm. This is uh, the realm of significance. Here, in the mental realm, the realm of the solitary self, we have subjective meaning. This is different than essential meaning, which we have between Hokma and Bina, along that path of Shin, the mother letter of fire, here in the air, we have subjective meaning. This is the path of Aleph, the mother letter of air, okay? Subjective meaning. My meaning and your meaning. 
their meaning and our meaning. So it is subjective meaning because we have awareness split up into all of these unique individual units, an infinite number of them, each having its own experience and its own perspective, thus it has its own perspective and experience of essential meaning, which is to say it's now subjective meaning. We translate it into subjective meaning. Now, <clears throat> further down, when we come to the water, it is significant because meaning then affects us personally. We affect other things personally. It's all about that relationship between self and other in the lower levels. And then in Malkuth is the physical awareness, okay? The physical part of the mental awareness. It's because our experience in the physical realm is all mental. Every bit of our experience it happens with our awareness. Physical sensation, physical experience is not physical. It's all processed through the brain and the awareness. It all happens in the awareness. How we experience the physical realm happens in the awareness, okay? So, <clears throat> the most exact definition of our bodies goes like this. Eternal mental body, okay? Temporal mental body. The temporal mental body has four elemental quadrants to it, just like the physical body has four elemental quadrants. The fire, the most ephemeral part of the, the, mental, the temporal mental body is the sentient self in Tiferet, that the, the purest part of the sentient, uh, the, excuse me, the solitary self in Tiferet is the fire. It is directly and intimately connected with Kether. That is the part of our awareness that we use to connect with the I in Kether. That, just that part of the awareness. It's also intimately and directly connected with Hokma. And it's that part of our awareness that we use to perceive essential meaning, to directly perceive essential meaning. It's that part of our awareness, part of the fire. And also it's intimately and directly connected with Bina. And it's this part of our awareness that rises up to our greater self and has communion with our greater self. It's also that part of the awareness that we touch upon in the emptiness of mind, where we stop thinking. It's that part of the awareness that is above thinking. It doesn't label things. It doesn't name things. It doesn't think thoughts. It's just pure awareness that perceives. That's all it does. It perceives. That's the fire aspect of the temporal mental body. The air aspect is between Gebura, excuse me, between Gejula and Gebura, the Aleph. This is the air region of the temporal mental body. Okay? Fire region touches the, uh, 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 the 
supernal realm. The air region does not directly touch that realm. Okay. The water region of the temporal mental body is that connection between Netzach and Hod, which we'll get to later. I've already covered it some, but it's that connection in which significance exists, and it's all about the relationship between self and other. All about that relationship, which is what leads us into physical manifestation. So the astral body is in reality the astramental body, okay? It's that phase of the mental body that exists in the astral realm, that realm of interaction between self and other of significance and in that significance we encounter duration and we have the three components of time at that point so below that Malkuth we have space and time and this is the physio astra mental body it's that phase of awareness that experiences and interacts with other at a physical level, okay? Here on a physical level, it again is all about that interaction between self and other. That is the whole of our existence is an interaction between self and other. And this is the final stage of the self-realization of the I. It is accomplished through interaction between the self and other within itself. And that interaction is infinite. So that brings the Aleph into a little more context here. This is a significant stage in self-realization of the I, where it realizes that it is self and other, okay? So, Aleph. This is sequence. Shin was change, infinite change. Aleph is infinite sequence. The sequence between a likeness and Yajula and uniqueness in Kibura. So from Gedula, we look over to Gebura and we see this infinite sequence of likeness becoming difference. Everything is more and more different the further away it gets. And from Gebura, we look back to Gedula and we see this infinite sequence of likeness, you know, uh, and of difference. Each thing along the sequence is more similar, less unique, okay? That is the continuum between self and other. Other is different than self, okay? So in this continuum between self and other, which is different than self, 
<clears throat> there are sequences of change. And it's infinite because there are an infinite number of sen solitary selves. So that continuum is infinite. <clears throat> so there is sequence in everything we perceive. In other, when we uh, perceive other, we perceive those differences. as the solitary self. <clears throat> we perceive the similarities and we perceive the differences. And in that perception, in that continuum, fundamental to that continuum is continuity. Threads of continuity because it's a sequence of differences, you know? It's this sequence. And there is a connection between this and the next in the sequence. They're very similar, you know, very much alike. There is continuity. So there's continuity to that sequential change. That all happens here with Aleph and the perceptions <clears throat> that the solitary self has of self and other. There's these consequences of sequence and continuity in this universe that is constantly changing, <clears throat> where everything is temporary, it's just relative. <clears throat> That's where we are with Alice. Now, <clears throat> another consequence of these perceptions is memory. Oh. I remember what this one looks like, so it's based on this memory that I judge uh, how different this one is, and uh, ad infinitum. So there's memory, there's a record of what has been perceived sequentially, because all perceptions our sequential perceptions, everything in this realm is sequential, okay? Everything, everything occurs in sequence here in the temporal realm. That is what we mean by temporal realm. A sequential realm is much more accurate a term, okay? So in the sequential realm, memory arises because there is this continuity to awareness just like there is to everything else that's what we're describing here is awareness there is there are these threads of continuity to our conscious awareness it's all connected that whole sequence of our experiences our perceptions are all connected, always. And the memory of all the past lives, what we would consider past lives, because that's all we have reference to here in the sequential realm, because we are always in the immediate now, which is moving through that sequence, <clears throat> that memory is within the fire region of the temporal mental body. 
in the pure tiferet. <clears throat> All of the experiences are remembered. So when we look to our past life memories, that's the <clears throat> part of awareness that we are touching upon and focusing in. So, <clears throat> in this triangle of the solitary self, awareness, the primary focus of awareness is upon the self. <clears throat> and <clears throat> understanding It's, uh, it's status within that dynamic of self and other. <clears throat> <clears throat> so it's primarily on just the self. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. In the water region, the astromental body, the focus shifts to the interaction, primarily the interaction between self and other. But here, the focus is more on the self and understanding where the self stands. Okay? So that's really the context of these next seven gates. Now, <clears throat> the, the gates always, well, it always starts off with a linear gate, the path on which appears in every single one of the, you know, gates that follow. Uh, well, all the gates of Aleph start with Aleph. And what it, the gates do beyond the linear gate is they integrate the Aleph awareness with everything above in every possible way that it can. Okay? So, we'll start now. The first gate of Aleph from the universal perspective. Okay. So we start in Gadjula as the whole body of solitary selves, the infinite number of solitary selves, just all consumed by that urge to merge. We have collectivized in all of these ways. We are the collective of parts. And we look across towards Gebura and the path of Aleph and we see that everything changes in this direction. We become less conjoined, more separate. We each stand alone and collectively we refine ourselves we each become aware of our own uniqueness within the collective awareness. We are a collective, a very powerful, unique, solitary selves. Oh, so powerful. We form like a vacuum that, that draws us over into this blazing inferno of Gebura, of infinite power. And then we look back over to Gebura. We again feel the draw of the collective 
drawing us back, drawing us our, in our empowered state back into Ketula. Okay, now, obviously, you learn here the connection between the collective of the whole and the whole collective on fire with its own power. And that's what Gebura is. Okay? It's the power inherent within the collective. It's not about individual power so much, although it is our individual powers, but it is about the collective and the power within the collective of all of that awareness. <clears throat> okay. Now, <clears throat> from a personal perspective, we start in Get Jula. We are here within the collectives. We are united with all of the, the other solitary selves. We are just united with everybody. All these, the collective of the whole, there's all these different collectives that I am a part of. The human collective, my cultural collective, all these collectives, down to the, the little collective of my friends and family. You know, all these layers of collectivity. And I look over at Kibura, oh, and it all breaks up. And I'm here on my own and I am unique and I am powerful in my uniqueness but it's only uh, because I, uh, I have this power that I can give to all these collectives that I love so much that I cherish so much this is my gift, my contribution to my collectives, and I take it back to Kajula. And my collective shines even brighter because of my contribution, empowered. Again, the primary lesson here is about that connection with the collective. And it gives purpose to that unique gift <laughs> that we have to give. It's to the collective that we have to give that unique gift. It's, it's in the context of the collective that that unique gift has meaning. This is my meaning. Okay? My subjective meaning is this gift that I have to give to the collective. <clears throat> so that's the first gate. <clears throat> the second gate is a triangle. It starts in Kedjula, along the path of Aleph into Gebura. Now there is in this path 
this this flow of air. But it's not it's not like the shin, the you know, undeniable, forceful, you know, uh, push. It's just a gentle flow of air from the collective to the unique. Okay. So we go down, Aleph, and then we come up, Virgo. Up the path of Yod to Tiferet. And then down the path of Leo and Teth to Gendula. And then back around. Teth Tiferet. Yod to Gebura and Aleph to Gebura. Okay. Now, <clears throat> from the universal perspective, we start again as that collectivized body <clears throat> of solitary cells and we move along that path of Aleph, being sort of sucked into Gebura, where it's all so powerful, so powerful. And then we pass up that path of Virgo, that purifying path backwards along that path up to Tifret, where the entire body of solitary cells exists in a pristine state. And then we travel down that path of Leo into Gajula, bringing <clears throat> the fullness of the solitary self into the collective. <clears throat> the fullness of all of those solitary selves into the collective once again. And then we pass back up to the pureness of Tiferet and then down into the cauldron of Gebura, and then back along that airy continuum to Gebura and the collective. Okay, this puts <clears throat> that continuum between Gebura and Gebura into context with Tiferet, the pristine state of the solitary self. And we experience here the three aspects of the solitary self, similar to the three aspects of the I. The three aspects of the I. We have three aspects of the solitary self, that pristine state, that collectivized state, and that individualized state. Okay? All three together. And now we'll do the same thing at a personal level. We start in Gajula as solitary self connected in all these ways with all of the collectives for which I have an affection. 
That is mercy, affection, Gajula. That is where I experience that connection with all of the solitary selves. And I travel down that path of Aleph along with that flow of Aleph into that gift that I have, that I give with love to my collectives. Then I pass up that purifying path of Virgo back to Tiferet, to that pristine state of the solitary self that state that is so closely connected with Kather, Hokma, and Bina. And I pass down to Gajula along that path of Leo. Along that path of Leo. And I bring the fullness of my solitary self, the fullest expression of my essential meaning to the collective. And then I pass back up to my pure solitary self and pass down that purifying, concentrating path of Virgo back to the cauldron where my gift shines so brightly with my essential meaning and then I bring it back to my beloved collectives once again. Okay. So, as I said, it, <clears throat> it brings that relationship between self and other into context with the solitary self and the, the relationship between the three aspects of the solitary self. These are the three aspects of your awareness that are always available to you. You can always reach for the eye. You can always perceive essential meaning. You can always yeah, commune with your greater self. You can always go to that depth point. You can always collect, uh, connect with your collectives. They are open to you. They are inviting to you. You can always connect with your collectives. And you can always connect with that specific, unique power that you have that is your gift to those collectives. Okay. <clears throat> These are the three aspects of the, the solitary self. So, the next game is the first quadrangle of this series. It starts, as usual, in Gajula, passes along Aleph to Gibura, passes up Daleth, Mars, path of Mars, to Bina, passes along the path of Shin, the mother letter of fire, to Hokmah, passes down the path of Gimel and Jupiter into Gajula. Mm -hmm. And then passes around up the path of Gimel, Jupiter, Hokma, across the path of Shin fire to Bina, 
down the path of Galeth, Mars to Gebura, and back along the path of Aleph, Air to Gejula. Okay. So, <clears throat> from a universal perspective, we start in Gejula as that entire body of collectivized solitary cells. We pass along the path of Aleph through sequence to the collectivized cauldron of powers in Gebura, where every single one of the solitary cells has realized its own power. And it's like a nuclear reaction. It's just ever increasing in strength. And we pass up the path of Mars to the realm of infinite form, a central form, undifferentiated form. We have let go of differentiation, but still all of form is before us. And we pass along that path of Shin through against that current of essential meaning back to Hokma and that infinite ocean of essential meaning, the unity of parts. And in that whole body of essential meaning flows down the path of Jupiter into Gajula as a whole and takes form as the infinite collective of solitary cells. And then we pass up again to the simplicity of undifferentiated essential meaning, passing upward through the Akasha into the undifferentiated realm. And we flow as essential meaning ever so swiftly into Dina, into the womb of form. We take form. We express ourselves through form. And then we imprint ourselves ever so strongly through Mars upon the body of solitary selves in the cauldron of power, it becomes the concrete expression of all of our forms. And we pass along back to our beloved collectives and empower them all. <clears throat> so, uh, now, uh, this is really a very a complex, very educational gate on all these different levels. It's teaching you the relationship between Shin and Aleph between essential meaning and subjective meaning, between infinite change and infinite sequence. Okay, it's putting this infinite sequence in the context of the eternal 
corollary, basically. See, this is Aleph, which is very similar to Shin in terms of its significance, its function, etc. Okay? <clears throat> so, now, from a personal perspective, starting Gedula, <clears throat> as my solitary self amongst this, amidst this ocean of other solitary selves, this infinite array of solitary selves that I am a part of this collective existence. I am a part. And I travel along the Aleph with the flow of the Aleph into Gebura, where I realize the power that I possess. Then I pass up that doorway of Mars to my greater self. And I experience, or I see, realize what that impress from my greater self is, the nature of that specific part, excuse me, of my greater self. And then I pass along into that infinite ocean of the central meaning. I let go of the groupings of essential meanings and reside just in that infinite ocean of essential meanings. Then I pass down with just my essential meanings into Gejula and I exist once again as my solitary self expressing just my little reflection of the I, which together with all of the other individual solitary selves reflects the whole of the I. And then I pass back up into Hokmah that infinite ocean of essential meaning and pass again back down that path of Shin with urgency and need into Bina and I again work my way down into my greater self and I represent my quantity of that great ocean of essential meaning. And I reach down and I impress it upon my solitary self in Gebura. Through the path of Mars, I put my imprint of just this quantity and quality of essential meaning and I watch its power explode and give aura and shine. And then I pass back along the path of Aleph to my beloved collectives and join them once again. Again, <clears throat> it puts... Uh, this uh, dynamism between Gejula and Gebura into the higher context of the dynamism between Chokma and Bina, which is reflected here. And you understand it much better in that context, okay? In that context, it becomes a more concrete thing, uh, something that you can make use of more readily 
once it's in this higher context. Okay, so the next video will be of the remaining four gates of, uh, get, of Aleph. Excuse me, remaining four gates of Aleph. Okay. So, until then, bye-bye.